hello and welcome. We are going to talk about the Dutch film Possessed. Uh, it's the only Dutch film in competition this year. Uh, we have three guests with us. Meta Haven, represented by Daniel and Vinka, and Rob Schroeder. Um, can you please tell us something about yourself, Meta Haven? This, uh, as I understood, this is your second film together. Please elaborate on this. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're Mette Haven, um, uh, originally designers, uh, we're filmmakers and artists uh, as well. And this is our second uh, long film and we did a number of music videos and short films as well, which we're still doing, um, in all kinds of different contexts, including cinema. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm originally also a designer, an other generation designer. And I think 20 years ago, um, I started to work for the VPRO television and made a lot of documentaries. And when I left, I think four years ago, I started to make my own documentaries. And now I'm sitting here with these two great persons uh, and made this film together. <laughs> So what is it that uh, is connecting the three of you that you do already the second film together? <laughs> um, we are um, friends, first of all, uh, also <laughs> colleagues working actually um, politically and, and, and so, let's say, ethically in the same way, okay. uh, with also differences in approach. Um, we teach also together, so we have a strong link there. Uh, and about four years ago, we decided we wanted to make this film together. Mm -hmm. So what was the first idea? Because the film is so complex and there are so many layers in uh, intellectually, but also in the work, how you did it. So I would like to elaborate on that. The, the film really started as a, a kind of like examination of the role of technology in our daily lives. That was mm -hmm. the first impetus. Uh, very particularly the role of um, um, apps, um, also WhatsApp and the way that um, digital devices have a way to make us crave for the company of others and actually uh, create a kind of constant uh, a kind of addiction. Mm -hmm. And we were very interested like what was behind that uh, is there a kind of new collectivity behind that or is it just something that keeps us caught up in this kind of matrix? Uh, and that was the initial starting point and the film grew of course different and, yes. and more, more complex than that. Mm -hmm. In particular the fact that Snapchat uh, has a ghost as its logo was one of the very early inspirations for, for <laughs> Possessed. Also mm -hmm. one reason why the, why the film has that name, although that is almost completely disappeared from the story. Okay. It was one, one reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So did you work with the script? Uh, yeah, we, we, we st the film started, the film plan was originally a kind of uh, lecture in a way. It was ah, kind okay. of like a talk. And then in that, that talk became a film plan. But the film never really had a strict script. Mm -hmm. The script emerged actually mostly after the shoot. <laughs> For the funding, I guess. <laughs> no, no, it was really just to provide the kind of like dialogue. It was I, something okay. that we had dialogue, mm -hmm. but the dialogue changed completely uh, after the at, after we did the shoots. It's, a, it's more a, of a monologue than a dialogue, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually more. Yeah. It's, uh, there's actually two political theorists as well. Yes, uh, the uh, Nick Cernick and Alex Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the ma protagonist is a monologue. Yes. Yeah. So at what time, uh, at what point did you thought this character that would guide us through the film. Uh. Do you guys want to say something about <laughs> the main character? <laughs> and uh, the, yes, and, and about her monologue and everything. So, so initially we, the, the idea was that we would have the, um, the, the actress that uh, Olivia Lonsdale, yes. uh, uh, who's um, acting in the film, also perform a number of the texts. Um, but um, during recording and during um, editing, we wanted um, t to create a character that was a little bit more um, distant in mm -hmm. a way, that was not necessarily a character that 
um, you kind of identify with as a viewer or um, that you see develop, you kind of want to know its mm -hmm. history, but rather be almost like a kind of avatar. Um, so the reason to, to create, um, uh, to have uh, a monologue as a, like a voiceover to the film also allowed for us to include different perspectives um, in, in the same character from almost kind of a philosophical point of view, uh, which we found um, uh, did not really work um, uh, when, the, when the character was kind of performing that. Um, and that actually also took um, a long time and a lot of um, rewriting and, re um, and editing to kind of get that uh, really right. Um, yeah. Yes, I can imagine. And, and the great thing was that uh, Olivia Lonsdale also had quite an influence uh, on, the, on the final uh, edit of the film okay. because she acted really good and, and that distance what you were talking about, she had it in her. Mm -hmm. So the moment we used an other voice and uh, we created that little bit of distance uh, with her, that fit, yeah, you know, it was almost a creation of herself. Mm -hmm. So she had quite an influence also in the, in the more fiction part of the film because she was acting so good. I was fascinated by her uh, character because uh, in a way she was representing not only this, m well in the first place these millennials, these young uh, and these people lonely in the first place, but also as such not only this group but as a, she was a representative of uh, mankind in a way. That's a good one. Uh, millennials also get older, of course. Uh, they are not this kind of mystical meme that always stays young. Yeah. And in a way, the, the idea of uh, age or the idea of generations plays a strong role in the film. Um, the fact that there is a baby boom generation that leaves the earth in a certain state and now this next generation has to live in that, in that world mm -hmm. and in a way project a future in it again. And... Um, um, I mean, it's quite easy nowadays to create kind of dystopian narratives, uh, but it's quite important to counter also dystopia with uh, utopia. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Rob, would you want to say something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the nice thing is of our collaboration, we are different uh, mm -hmm. uh, worlds, eh? of different... Uh, I'm uh, ages, yeah. I'm, um, I'm um, let's say, uh, somewhere uh, deep over the 60s. <laughs> 60. Yeah. So also the clash in yes. our discussions about the different uh, uh, um, worlds we came from is also part of where finally the film came out. And the discussions were sometimes quite uh, uh, harsh, but <laughs> that's in such, a, in such a film, which took three years, it was very, very important to have that these kinds of discussions and for me when you would say okay what is the film about and I'm, I'm looking at my generation mm -hmm. it's a critique of my generation because they fucked up the words yeah <laughs> and and they are of course of a, and, and, and they are younger and, uh, and uh, have far more years be uh, so that clash was also very very important in our film so there is, a, uh, in the film, there is a, it's not exact quote probably, but the girl is saying uh, we, are, we stopped communicating, we don't communicate, we message to each other. Did you communicate? Did you message? <laughs> Do you use, uh, are the, because, I mean, uh, why I said uh, I, I can also identify with the girl because I do use uh, WhatsApp and all this stuff. Uh, do you use? Uh, I use it, uh, and sometimes uh, I really want to um, throw my cell phone away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the problem is that uh, sometimes you need it. But there comes a moment, I have friends who throw through their cell phones away okay. already. Well, you do in the beginning of the film, you burn them. Yes, <laughs> yes, but that's also critique on our position. <laughs> Yeah, Rob sends very short messages, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, 
I think that that's the fight or the, the productive discussion, I should say, is also about the role of fiction uh, and the role of documentary. Let's say, is a documentary uh, a genre which just feeds us with material that let, that shows us how the what's what's to be concerned about in the world, or is a documentary also a genre that can present? alternatives or create a space in which the thinking about alternatives becomes possible again mm -hmm. and the, the latter was very important for this film yeah. um, uh, the role of fiction the idea of building your own world etc uh, which we did largely in the kind of like wide scope sort of scenes as opposed to this kind of like really raw internet material that's also in the film yeah yeah and I there is also like an almost clash yeah. between those two worlds yes. sometimes although they, they they are kind of like became really one story it's interesting but there are different textures yes yeah. there is a lot of uh, actually information i had to see the film twice to and i still think i didn't observe uh, everything what's in it because it's a combination what you said fiction mm -hmm. documentaries that are shot among others at croatia at some airport base uh, what else? There is a lot of internet uh, found footage or uh, selfies. And so. so how did you research that internet stuff and how did you s decide what to do and what not to do? Because you have even, YouTube, I read, you have even, uh, what is it, the makeup uh, a tutorial, how to put your makeup. <laughs> uh, this is the, the, the YouTube department is really the department of these two. Vinka? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, yeah, there's even more of uh, footage. Fascinating uh, footage, um, really fascinating. Also, this army, the, the, the army footage is... I had thrillings uh, when I the saw... The dancing soldiers. Yes. Yeah. It's a s yeah, w yeah. Um, shameful, so actually. Very why, why is that in the film? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Rob wants to say something about the dancing soldiers. It's, that's, that's, of course... There's a timeline in it, yeah. which gives also a bridge. How many years the United States already are in so much countries uh, and yes. find some kind of war, mm -hmm. which fails for a big part, but it's also the, the, the tragic of these soldiers. And the United States is, is a country which uses their soldiers so much and, 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 and when they come back, they are all fucked up. So during their fights, they organize these kinds of strange uh, dancing on pop music, mm -hmm. which gives such a double feeling of fail failure yes, 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 yes. of American say, interventions in, mm -hmm. uh, in all these countries. But also, we, we wanted to show, like, you know, if with these devices, where do they go, right? Where can you take them? And it's not that, oh, yeah. and, and, in a, and in a sense, it's, you know, the, this, like, all-seeing eye, this kind of gaze, the, the camera, we can take it. it it's, even, it, it's used in the army for, you know, to, for soldiers dancing in their free time yeah. to record that. It's people climbing on uh, yes. tall buildings it's to kind of show off the their Dubai kind of there. yeah to 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 show their <coughs> fierceness of like their, their performance to what we don't really mm -hmm. that you know that a, a performance to themselves maybe so it's it's the um, it's like the the taking of this camera into di like into very specific very extreme settings that's mm -hmm. also part um, and still they all uh, seem to be very lonely. <laughs> I think that's also the that's at least the message that I was getting uh, from the film. Um, th how much are we uh, over flood with uh, images, and still the girl uh, who is there with her phone in the bed and everything, and so lonely. Yeah, at the same at, at the same time, um, there's. Um, we try in this film to also um, open up a space for a, uh, to kind of imagine what a possible future of of of, con of connecting all of these together could be. Yeah. So it's um, we wanted with this film not to arrive at a kind of um, um, analysis of that of that 
it's all terrible and everyone's lonely and that's the end. There's also a huge um, potential um, in, um, in um, what we could together imagine our future to be. And that okay. is uh, what we um, hope to do with this film, also propose um, an imagination for the, um, for the future. So what do you think the future will be? Well, <clears throat> that of course the film does not really say that. Uh, the, the film tries to create in this kind of a, a space where the unexpected, because we don't know what the future will be, of course, mm -hmm. and this is actually also a kind of asset. Instead, it's not a setback; it's also an asset that we that the unexpected can still happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a but the the, the sort of regime of uh, basically capitalism um, has created um, a kind of saturation in which this imagination is impossible like there's a famous saying that says that it's easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of capitalism so and this yeah <laughs> and uh, this is actually uh, why the present you know the present feels incredibly saturated but of course the future generation it will be the future and it will be the future that it never saw coming mm -hmm. so this is actually the, the, the space what that the film kind of points to uh, especially near the end. And in this space, collectivity uh, and togetherness play a kind of strong role, in a way. Um, <clears throat> and we don't mean that in a sort of sentimental way, like, oh, together we will solve it or whatever. It is that we can literally not do it alone. Uh, and this is why the film maybe gets maybe slightly happier towards the end. I don't know. <laughs> Very subjective. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, for me, towards the end, it's quite artistic when, when we see these uh, ladies walking and uh, no face, but only yeah. beautiful, Faceless, colorful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, but uh, on the end, when uh, our Olivia says, um, <laughs> is it enough to love yourself? Mm. Yeah. And I think one of the main points for me personally is that it's a statement against this hyper-individualism. Yeah. And that hyper-individualism is over, has to be over. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the... Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what Daniel said, it isn't clear which way to go, but one thing is that, let's say, we have to find some kind of common ground. <laughs> That's why sometimes uh, Daniel or Finca says, well, it's, a f it's a film, it's not a film about dating, but it's a film about communism. And the word, the word communism, everybody's like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> but the word <laughs> itself says a lot. Mm. Without the context of all these mass murders, etc., mm -hmm. etc. But a discussion about what that ex exactly means, that's an important discussion. Mm. Nice that you also said that uh, that's uh, very much coming of, out of the film, that it's also much about love. Yeah, well, I mean, it's of course very hard for like an artwork or a film to directly change you know, the world. So it's, mm -hmm. it's also not a pamphlet in that sense. But um, the film plays with a sort of almost a, sometimes a kind of slightly spiritual or, uh, uh, side uh, with the, also the citation from the Corinthians uh, from the New Testament yeah, yes. uh, which is a, a fantastic monologue about love um, of course it's very cheesy you know it's potentially cheesy if mm -hmm. you bring in the word love before you know you, you are in this kind of like zone right where we don't no longer talk about what love means but we presuppose what it means mm -hmm. and actually we don't invent or we don't discover what it means um, which is why, why you cannot actually you really use the word love, but when she says love yourself, this is actually something that we that came up in discussions with Olivia, because this is of course a way that modern kids are also raised. I'm sorry, I, we have to say goodbye to you. It's a wonderful conversation, but uh, we have some limitations. So thank you so much uh, for this. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, meeting. I would like so to much. wish you a good luck with the competition and thanks for uh, bringing the film to Rotterdam. Thank you. Thanks thanks a lot. It was a pleasure.